251 pounds for the UK's Tom Aspinall. He's got good skills, but good is not enough. You can be great. Fight fans, welcome back to Luxury Tainment. In this video, I'll be taking a closer look at the upcoming fights between Tom Aspinall v Curtis Blades. The UFC will make its second visit to London this year on Saturday when Curtis Blades and Tom Aspinall meet in the main event of UFC Fight Night with a potential title shot at stake. The fighters will share the cage in this weekend's UFC Fight Night 208 main event. Curtis Blades is currently ranked number 4 in the heavyweight division after two consecutive victories against Dorcas and Rosenstreak. Blades has just one defeat in his last seven fights and that came against Derek Lewis in February last year. Blades will be defending his spot in the rankings against the fast rising contender Tom Aspinall. Aspinall is undefeated after 5 fights in the UFC and most recently picked up a big win against Alexander Volkov, Sergei Spivak and Andrea Alavoski. Aspinall is now ranked number 6 in the division and is on the fast track to title contention especially if he manages a win against Blades this weekend. Aspinall v Blades is one of those matchups that involve two massive waves of momentum crashing down on one another. Aspinall undefeated in the UFC and Blades coming off a huge wins over Rosamund Streak and Dukas. Stylistically, the two men are problematic for the division in very opposing ways. Aspinall is potentially the most well-rounded heavyweight on the roster, with wicked fast hands, footwork like a welterweight and a black belt level jiu-jitsu. Blades, on the other hand, is a wrestler through and through with vicious ground and pound while Aspinall is dangerous everywhere. Blade has a route to victory which has been honed to a point where every opponent knows what's ultimately coming and few have been able to stop it. Tom Aspinall's success in the division is largely due to his unique light off foot approach. While the same can be said of a few heavyweights over the history of combat sports, most relevant currently being Cyril Garney. Aspinall moves like he is a multiple weight classes lower than he is. He has fluid footwork and this is partially the reason he has been so difficult to take down. He has consistently been able to circle out and remove his hips from close contact a beat faster than most other heavyweights would expect. And this is a massive advantage against a guy in Curtis Blades, who we know is going to be looking for that shot. Offensively, it's all about the hand speed for Tom Aspinall. He has a slick 1-2, which he hits from far out with his burst in and out. He tends to back his opponent up by feinting front kicks of both legs, which is especially effective because knees down the middle are always a weapon his opponent, and even more so, Blaze has to be wary of. One potential issue with Aspinall is he does tend to leave his head on centre line once he plants and commits to ting off on his opponent against the cage. However, because his flurries come in close quarters and Blades likes to utilise straight shots primarily, stuffing that range may take away Blades' ability to fire back as much as he'd like.
for Blades, his primary route is definitely looking to take Asmal down and rain down elbows from the top. His striking is always improving between fights, as evidenced by his most recent fight ending by a knockout against Durkus. However, the arsenal of attacks and their purpose has been relatively unchanged over his evolution. Blaze has emotional striking, meaning he never overcommits out of becoming over aggressive of or zealous. His punches are meant to sting and tease his opponent into countering. If they land flush and knock his opponent out, that's great, but any heavyweight can knock any other out if they hit the money. And Blades has shown he has consistent at looking to dominate and not chase a risky finish. His long 1-2 combination sets up the takedown. Once he lands, it's a few times. Opponents believe they read the straight coming behind the jab and set their feet to counter, at which point the level change comes behind the jab. Once on top, Blades is very good at mixing up the angles of his elbows between fully loaded shots that roll over the shoulder and tight short elbows that allow him to remain chest to chest. His mount is almost immovable. Tom Asmal has to avoid ending up underneath Curtis Blades at all costs, not only because this is where he is obviously in the most danger, but because he should have the advantage in pretty much any other area. Blades has a sharp basic boxing style, but he tends to come in on a straight line, utilizing his reach and setting up for direct takedowns. Aspinall has shown how to use angles to cut out his opponent's options for counters and the speed to get in and out before they can land anything. Ultimately, what I believe Tom Aspinall should do and will likely to do is take the center cage more often. I think he may be a bit more reserved than we've seen him, but I think with his hand speed, he can get off first and look to draw out the reactive takedown of Blades. If Blades looks to level change under Aspinall's strikes rather than set them up first with his own, then Aspinall will be able to set Blades up for a knee or uppercut down the middle while Blades tries to drive through with the takedown. No one can say whether this can materialize in the finish, but in general, I think that throughout the fight, Asmol can stay elusive and make Blades pay for when he gets too predictable. The winner of Saturday's main events could potentially be in line for the next title shot against champion. Francis Naganu, who currently doesn't have a fight booked in large part because he is sidelined indefinitely while recovering from a knee injury. So guys, who do you think wins Saturday night? Thanks for watching, please subscribe, like, comment and share and have a great day.